This is one of the most popular grilled dishes in Hawaii. And this recipe really is closer to the Korean style of kalbi recipe. In Hawaii, you see a lot of recipes with ginger, shoyu, and sugar. But when I did some research and I was trying to figure out why Korean restaurants tend to be different than local style, it was that they put things in there like grated Korean pear. And so I wanted to find a recipe that I thought sort of celebrated the Korean style, but was something that was still simple to do. And so this recipe uses uh, apple juice, which we're going to start with. And then it has a little bit of meat in. But that's all the sugar that's going in here. There's no added granulated sugar. We're also going to put the shoyu in now. And there's less shoyu in this recipe than the typical local recipe. I think that's important because that way you don't end up with a really dark, dark sauce that, that discolors the meat. Now we have some uh, sesame seeds that are going to go in. I've got red chili flakes. I have sesame oil. And then for flavoring, we're going to add some sliced white onion. And I have some garlic cloves here that I'm just going to go ahead and smash for flavor. Now this recipe does not have ginger in it. There, there you might see recipes that are other local recipes that have ginger in it. But when I did the research, I didn't find really recipes that had ginger. So if that's a preference and that's, you want to put that in, it'll still work. But I wanted to try to come up with something that was as close to what I thought was what I was seeing in uh, Korean restaurants. The last ingredient is uh, some sliced green onion. Now, once the green onion's ready, we're going to go ahead and put in the meat. For the dish here, I'm using uh, certified Angus beef. We're using Foodland's Premium Choice Certified Angus Beef, and I'm going to do two different types of meat. Let me stir this up here. One of the other benefits of not using granulated sugar is you don't have to worry about letting the sugar dissolve. This is all ready to go now. So I have a traditional style kalbi, which is the short rib that's thin cut, and you have the three bones in here from the short rib. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here so that it can marinate. But the other one that I'm going to use also, which is a great cut, and it's something that more and more I think people are using, and it just makes a wonderful boneless uh, style. And this is a, it's called a boneless short rib, and uh, it actually comes off of the chuck flap, but it's connected to the same area that the uh, short rib comes from. And it gives you a nice tender, uh, nice marbled piece of meat, but also again, this is something that will, you don't have to deal with the bones. So we have all of our meats in here in the sauce, and we're going to go ahead and marinate this overnight. You know, if you're doing something on, that's quick and you want you don't have the overnight, I'd want to give it at least four hours of marination time. And then we're going to come back, and then we're going to grill this up, and then we're going to do what I love to do most, which is eat. So I have some meat here that uh, we actually marinated yesterday and we gave it a full day's marination. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and grill some. So I have a nice, I have a gas, a portable gas grill here and it's been heating up. One of the things that's really important when you're grilling is to really make sure you clean the grates so that the meat doesn't stick. Now, kalbi can be tricky for two reasons. It has a lot of fat and there's the, it does have that sugar in there so you don't wanna burn it and the fat can make flare up. So when you're grilling, you always wanna have uh, some water in case you have a flare up. And what I'll do is I'm going to just lightly spray the grill here with some pan spray just to kind of lubricate the grates so that when I put the meat on, it helps prevent it from sticking. So now I've got uh, some of the boneless short ribs that's going to go on. And we're going to put some of, a, a row of that. And then we're going to go ahead and put some of the, uh, the kalbi or the, uh, the actual short ribs with the bone on. We're going to put these on. I'm just going to keep an eye on them. We're going to grill them till they're nice and got some good charring on them and uh, they're cooked through. Then we're going to come back and uh, we'll do a quick plate up. 
So we've got uh, our two different cuts here. We've got some of the boneless short rib and the regular kalbi. I'm just going to kind of finish these last few pieces off. But uh, the only thing left to do is really uh, to eat a little bit. I got some uh, rice. I got some potato salad. We've got kimchi. I'm going to cut a few pieces off of this out uh, here and uh, see what we got. I think this looks awesome. The nice thing about using a boneless short rib too is you can cook to a, like a medium doneness. You don't have to cook it all the way and you still get the benefit of all that great kalbi flavor. I guess the last thing to do before I go for this massive uh, flavor overload is to remind you guys that you can get more recipes like this at foodland.com. Cheers. Mmm. That's good.